Hi guys, and welcome to Demios Tech. In this video I will show you the Alphawise U20. This is not the first clone of the Creality CR10. The Alphawise U20 has a build volume of 30x30x40cm and an aluminum structure with ball bearings. It has the heated bed and it comes with a cover very similar to the build took, which allows the print to stick very easily without using any spray on it. It mounts a Bowden extruder and it has a filament sensor, which stops the print when the material is finished. There is also a system that saves the status of the print when the power goes off, so that it can restart the print from that point when the power is restored. It looks quite nice, even if the cables and some 3D printed details just give it a homemade finish. The price is around $250 and this makes it a good candidate to be a best buy in its category. No issues in the packaging, all the components were nice protected and the box had some angular reinforcements to avoid accidental damages during the travel. Opening the box we can find the base with the bed already mounted, while in the bottom part there is the Z-axis structure, as well as the electronic control box and some tools. In addition to cables and assembly screws, we can find an SD card, pliers, some PLA for testing and a filament holder. Finally, we can find an instruction manual for the configuration and usage. It can be found also in the SD card, as well as some testing models and the slicer Cura 15, which is very outdated now and honestly I would not recommend to use. I will post a video focused on using this printer with more recent slicers, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. The main board comes with a 32-bit processor and it is powered at 24 volts, which allows to the bed and the hot end to reach target temperatures in few minutes. The stock firmware is close as source, but it is frequently updated by the Alphawise team. Mounting this printer is very easy, just as any other printer with similar structure. It is sufficient to secure the Z-axis structure to the base and then proceed with fixing the lateral plates on both sides. The cables used are quite rigid and they can create some problems. Pay attention while positioning them in order to avoid that the movements of the printer pull them and cause damages. I think that I will switch to something more flexible in the future. A rapid check to the build plate leveling and we are ready to print. The firmware version that I'm using is the 2.13, released on August 2018. Through the touch screen we can access the command menu which shows the classical sections that we can find in almost every modern printer, such as the manual movement of the axis, a browser for the files on the SD card, extruder commands, both manual and automatic for loading and unloading the filament, and a guided procedure for bed leveling. The low-level settings menu allows to change parameters related to speed and acceleration of the motors, affecting the behavior of the firmware and the print quality, which is already quite good without any particular configuration. Let's see now the print quality. My first tests were done without any optimization, using the red PLA that arrived in the box. I printed two different models downloaded from Thingiverse, the Calicut and the 3D Benchy. For both I used Cura 3.5 as a slicer and I set the layer height to 0.2mm. I printed the Calicut twice with two different profiles. In this one I set only two outlines and 5% of infill. It's possible to see the points in which the infill reaches the external perimeter, making the piece more opaque. This visual effect almost covers the salmon skin effect, which can be seen in the second calicut. In this one I set to 3D outlines and I kept the infill at 5%. The visual appearance is way more better and the infill lines are not visible anymore. There are just some small defects on the layers, but they are acceptable. The 3D Benchy is more difficult to be printed with respect to the Calicut. Here I set to 3D outlines and to 10% the infill. 
Layers are almost perfect, we can see just some blobs which can be related to the poor quality of the filament I'm using. I would say that from my first tests the printer did a fairly good job overcoming my initial expectation given by the low price. In a second video I will focus on the experience with this printer after some time in order to give a review based on a longer usage time. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned and if you liked this video please thumbs up.